What's up guys, Nick here. Today I'm gonna to do a little walk and talk video with you. So, has overages and surplus funds reached a point of oversaturation? So I've talked a lot about, you know, competition and saturation. I've, I've highlighted this, this issue several times in several videos, but I keep getting the question, so I'm gonna make another one. Um, so is the business saturated? Well, let's define saturation, okay? So if you go to Google, type in the word saturation and, and see what pops up. There's several different, um, you know, niches that you can have a definition in. You can get a definition in physics and chemistry and commerce. So let's look at the, um, the physics definition is saturation is when a, something has reached a point where it can no longer take any more inputs, okay? So, you know, if, if a, mo a molecule has reached the point of saturation, it can't take any more atoms. In commerce, saturation means that the supply for an item no longer exists. The demand has been met. So, for overages, what does that mean? What would that look like? If we reached a point of saturation in overages and surplus funds, it would mean there would be no demand for our services. There would be no demand to recover surplus funds. And so what that would look like is there would be no money available to recover or everybody out there that was entitled to money would have a claim submitted. That's what saturation would look like in the overages and surplus funds business. We're not there yet, um, far from it. There is hundreds of millions of dollars waiting to go back to people. That's just sitting there doing nothing. Governments are collecting interest on that. That's what it's doing. So have we hit saturation yet? No. Will we ever hit saturation? It's possible. Um, you know, everyone would have have a claim submitted. There would be, you know, if you looked at court records, every single case that had surplus funds would have a claim filed in it. But that's not the case right now. Um, also, we would have to have the generation of surplus funds would would stop. And in order for that to happen, foreclosures would have to happen. In order for foreclosures to stop, people would have to stop dying, people would have to stop getting divorced, and people would stop need to have stop having traumatic life events such as medical issues, things of that nature. Those are the things that cause foreclosure, death, divorce, and disaster. Frankly, I don't see any of those things ending anytime soon. Okay? As far as competition goes, are, is there competition? 100% absolutely yes, there's competition in this business, okay? Competition is a sign of a viable business, okay? If competition exists in an industry, it means that that business works for multiple people. If there is no competition in an industry, that's a bad thing because it means there's something wrong, that it doesn't work for multiple people, okay? So if you come across an opportunity where there's no competition, be wary. Why is, why is there no competition? Why doesn't it work for multiple people? That's the question you should ask. So it's not a bad question. It's a very logical question to ask if is, is the overage and surplus funds industry competitive or is it saturated? You've, I've given you my take on saturation issues. As far as competition goes, um, absolutely there's competition. But I guess I have a different perspective. You see my background, obviously you know my background. I used to be a corrections officer. Um, I also started my entrepreneurship game doing uh, wholesaling real estate. And at one point I was a licensed realtor. When I was a wholesaler, I was probably competing with 50 to 100 other investors in my market. 
When I was a realtor, thousand other agents are in my state. When I started doing surplus funds, I found that yes, there was, there was still competition, but I was dealing with maybe 10 people. And so I would rather compete with 10 than a thousand or a hundred, okay? Now, will that number go up over time? Absolutely, yes, for sure. More people will come in, but also people will go out. And that's one of the biggest keys that I can give you is if you can just last longer than most people, you beat 90% of the people out there because people come in and then they get out of the game. So competition is a good thing. And frankly, you should be competing whether you are in overages or not. Whatever you're doing right now, you should be competing. What do I mean by that? You should be trying to do better than your coworkers, or you should be trying to do better in business. Why? Well, how else are you going to improve? How else are you going to grow? You know, if you're not competing, if you're not trying to be better, how are you gonna make any progress? You know? So don't be afraid of competition, guys. Learn to love competition. Learn to thrive in competition. Um, because competition exists in everything. Competition exists in nine to five jobs. Competition exists in business. And if you're not competing, if you're not trying to become better and do better, you're getting passed up and you're not going to get where you want to go. You see, if, if, you make, if you make 60 grand a year, okay, and you want to double your income, so you want to make 120,000 a year, in order for you to do that, you have to become a different person. You have to do different things, okay? You've got to become better. You have to get more knowledge, more skills, and more traits, the character traits that a person that makes $120,000 a year has versus a person that makes 60 grand a year, okay? So hopefully you are already competing and the, your biggest competitor is the person in the mirror, okay? You've got to, you've got to beat that person every day. You gotta become better, okay? That's the ultimate goal. But as far as the competition overages, surplus funds, 100% yes, it exists. It will always exist, okay? If you're not okay with that, um, you should probably not become a business owner of any sort is the bottom line. And if you're not willing to compete at a job Personally, I would, you know, don't expect to get a raise or a promotion anytime soon is the bottom line. Okay? Competition is a good thing. Without competition, there is no progress. There is no innovation. So, I think what the real question is, is when someone asks me, is the business competitive or oversaturated? I think what the real question that you're asking is, is the business hard or is it easy to get deals? And the business is hard. 100% the business is hard. It takes a lot of patience, takes a lot of consistency, a lot of follow-up. Um, being an entrepreneur is hard. That's, that's the, the biggest thing between, you know, working a nine to five and, and being a business owner is if you show up to the nine to five and you just, you know, if you show up and do the whatever task you need to do, you're guaranteed a paycheck. Being a business owner, you could put in 40 hours a week 
and not get paid for that 40 hours, at least not immediately. And that's, ex that's absolutely true in the overages business. The work you do today, you will not see the result of until three or four months down the road. Okay. Um, there is no guarantee. You could do lots of work and not see a result. And that's not just specific to overages, that's specific to any business. Okay? And so if, if you're not comfortable with that idea, then now is not a good time for you to get into overages or to get into any sort of entrepreneurship venture. All right? Now, I would not recommend to folks what I did, where I just quit my job cold turkey and, and didn't have an income for five months. I would not recommend that. I would recommend to both, most folks is start part-time in this business or whatever entrepreneur endeavor you want to embark on. Start out part-time, build it up, and once you've replaced your nine to five job income with your side gig or your side hustle, then you can quit your job. Um, or at least have a good amount of savings so that when you do quit, you're not stressed out about bills, which we did have that, so, cause we sold our house. Um, so yeah, that's my take guys on, again, I've made many videos on this, but as far as competition and saturation goes, saturation and the overages I've mentioned, I don't think we'll ever reach that point. A lot of things would have to come together. Um, and if those things came together, that'd be great. You know, if, if people stop getting divorced and people stop having, you know, financial disasters, medical issues, you know losing a job yeah that would be great right but i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon um so will we ever reach a saturation point unlikely highly unlikely is there competition in the business 100 percent, there is uh, but i like dealing with the competition and overages versus other industries and other niches based on my experience um I can't imagine going back to being a real estate agent now. No way, no thank you, not interested. Um, can't imagine trying to wholesale properties right now. You know, can't imagine trying to, you know, sell insurance or, um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that, you know, I prefer to deal with the competition and overages versus other industries. But that's just my viewpoint. That's just my opinion, okay? But competition exists everywhere. You should be competing. And if you're not, you're falling behind. Um, do not shy away from competition. The nice thing I will say too, though, is when I do say that there's competition and somebody decides that they're not gonna pursue something because there's competition, I am totally okay with that because it makes it easier for us that do compete, it makes it easier for us to win. And that's not, that may come across as, you know, pretentious, I guess. That's not the point. It's just the truth. Like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to teach somebody about this game that's not going to commit to it. If you're not going to commit to it, or if you're going to search out reasons not to do something, just, just save yourself the time and the hassle and just say, just say, I'm not gonna do it. Just stick with it, you know? Don't waste time trying to look for reasons not to do something. What's, that's, I don't understand that. That's, that's kind of a, I don't know. Anyway, seems like a waste of time to me. You're gonna compete regardless of what you go into. There's no way to not compete is the bottom line that I'm trying to say. So just learn to compete, guys. Just learn to compete. Um, and understand that you are going to experience loss, okay? I will end with one quick story. So 
in my younger days, I used to wrestle. Okay, I wrestled all through junior high and high school. So those were my sports. I played football, I wrestled, and I raced motorcycles. That was what, that's what I used to do. Okay. In wrestling, I started in fourth grade and wrestled all through until I graduated high school. Um, from fourth grade to my sophomore year, I basically, all of those years were, I had more losses than wins. They were all losing seasons for me, okay? Um, I was not a great wrestler. But, you know, junior and senior year, I finally ra got decent, racked up some wins, had winning seasons, was a region champion, a wrestler, you know, placed at state. Um, and so... The point I'm trying to make is I endured, let's see, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, seven years of losing seasons to experience two years of winning seasons and be a region champion in place of state. So the point I'm trying to make is you are going to have losses Nobody has a 100% win record in business or in anything, okay? Um, the losses are how you learn. That's how you get better. And so there's that other, I think there's, that's a fear a lot of people have is, well, I just don't want to lose. Well, you can't experience the win if you're not a, willing to experience a loss. And that's the thing that blows my mind the most is people, they, they don't, a lot of folks don't get what they want because they're never willing to step into the ring and, ex and take on that risk of loss. And if you're not willing to do that, you'll never get what you want. Bottom line. So anyway, kind of a rant. Those are my thoughts. Hope it's helpful. Have a great day, guys. See ya.